Marnen! Marnen! Welcome to the India Explained podcast, recorded in London and San Francisco. One take, unscripted, no rehearsal. Hey, Banti. Good morning. Uh, greetings from San Francisco. Hope everything is well with you in London. Uh, I thought today maybe we could talk about uh, the event that's you know convulsed and shocked a lot of people in India, which was the uh, the killing of the journalist uh, Gauri Lankesh, uh, who was someone who was uh, fiercely independent, uh, ran a Kannadiga daily, which is something her father had started. She was known as an I think a rationalist and atheist and. Uh, she was very staunchly opposed to any kind of majoritarianism, particularly Hindutva. Uh, now, she was on some kind of Hindutva hit list, and they found out that the gun used in her murder uh, was of the same type at, as had been used in the murders of Kalburgi and Pansare, who were two other rationalists uh, who had also fallen afoul of Hindutva forces. Uh, since that's happened, there's uh, you know been a number of things. A uh, number of people uh, online have actually celebrated her death. Some of them happen to be followed by our Prime Minister Modi. That made uh, the headlines in the New York Times. Uh, the supporters of the BJP and the right generally say that we can't jump to conclusions. We don't know it's the right, but her sister, her lawyer say that they have no question that uh, they have no doubt that the BJP is behind it. And as we speak, uh, I think either uh, earlier today in India time, uh, there were uh, there were protests in a large number of uh, cities in India, from what I can gather. I know that Gurgaon, now called Gurugram, had a very healthy turnout and a lot of you know active citizens in the civil society sphere, like uh, Harsh Mandar, spoke uh, again condemning this murder and saying that this is not not in our name. Right. Well, um, I see Gauri Lankesh has kind of, obviously I've picked up the news as well, but I will be honest, Rohit. It's not a journalist whose work I have been familiar with, only because I don't read the language that she writes in. And, uh, and I, you know, so neither was I familiar with her work, I should add. Correct. So what has happened now is uh, a free-spirited journalist has been killed, right? Uh, is, so is, is your view that this was she was on a hit list uh, of BJP? Is it? Conjecture, or do you think there is there's an inquiry in place, and uh, Gauri's uh, people have said that you know it's most likely that it'll be uh, these people uh, from BJP sponsored organizations. Is oh. is that well, what's going on on that one? Oh, there is uh, you know it's beyond conjecture because there is a hit list. She received death threats from the Hindu right. Uh, right. She also actually had appealed a defamation case which she had lost because uh, she had taken on. A uh, couple of uh, BJP politicians. I think in one of those cases, the case, no, it was her and someone else against whom defamation cases had been filed. In one case, one person's case, it was thrown out. In her case, apparently, she didn't provide enough evidence, but she had applied for anticipatory bail. So she had right. definitely run afoul of the right. And there is a kind of list. She was number four on the list. And I think this is, this is no secret. So, uh, okay. you, you know, so that, that I think now, the interesting question here is that uh, what is the role of the BJP in particular in this murder? There's a whole range of these Hindu right organizations and mm. uh, many of them are fringe and the way they function is uh, through a structure of plausible deniability. That's sort of been the you know, uh, role of the RSS as well, right? We know, for instance, that the RSS has played a role in riots, uh, right. but it always uh, denies having done any such thing saying we are a non-political organization, we are a social cultural organization. Uh, or that, you know, we have nothing to do with the Bajrang Dal or the, you know, Vanar Sena or the Sri Ram Sena, one of these many organizations. So I, I, there was such a fringe organization that was found to be responsible in the case of those other deaths, who had people yeah. also run afoul. Again, the it works to the advantage of the Hindu right gen generally and to the BJP politically. But yeah, it's difficult to say that the BJP organized this murder or was responsible for it. That's not a conclusion that one can draw. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me. So this is a, a very um, upstanding journalist. Uh, you know, from all accounts that I have read, you know, she's a very straight bat. Uh, she calls it out as she sees it, uh, and she's always, um, you know, trying to take the side of the underdog against the establishment, which is kind of, you know, central casting journalist, as you can call it, you know, as central casting as it gets. So very right. filmy, as in, 
you know, I, I have I have not seen visuals of her with Jhola or not, but you know, it, the mind's eye thinks of her as a person who is kind of completely married to the imagery of you know championing the underdog, questioning the establishment, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and running, going out on a limb and running a paper by herself, which is not prone to subscription sponsorship. Because one thing I did pick up is the paper that she ran didn't take uh, sponsorship because nowadays it didn't take Indian... adver- it didn't take advertisements but it was it was actually sustained yeah. by subscriptions okay fine so you have to subscribe to it to uh, for this lady to do what she did right uh, so unlike uh, some of the larger newspapers that are there in the land today uh, and i'm not going to take names but you know it it seems like the whole newspaper is an advertorial right, right. Um, so in a contrast to that kind of journalism, she was at another end, obviously operating in a in a regional language, and therefore her sphere of influence uh, limited, not not on national stage. That's my initial ignorance. Now, right. <clears throat> look, at, there are two angles on this story. One is that we could go and talk about the fact that an upstanding journalist has been killed. Right. Right. Now, my question is. It's probably not the first time this has happened. This has happened in other right. governments' watch. I mean, Indira Gandhi was notorious for doing this. She would, you know, bark and cajole people to write particular things in a particular way. Sure. So the, there is history of uh, government intimidating press. You know, the the the. Um, so what I'd like to pick up on is something different, which is uh, this is this type of behavior is almost commonplace and acceptable in places like Bangladesh, in places like Pakistan, Russia, uh, Russia where, world. yeah, so what, what, what happens is it's almost like the bullying of journalists and kind of um, journalists not being able to, Indians generally, the perception of Indians generally, uh, we are very polite but devious people, right? We will never say things to people's face. We will say yes, sir, yes, sir, in the face and then go away and write something devious about it. But one of the things that I've noticed about Indian journalism is there are lots of people who take adversarial positions. That's been going down um, recently because right, right. this government government is on the front uh, front foot. My my The mood point that I want to make is we are surrounded by nations in the region where free and fair journalism is almost near impossible to achieve. Right. I think that this lady's death, unfortunate and completely needs investigation is solving. I am. I think it's really commendable that there has been protests, there has been widespread coverage and the fact that it is snowballing. Because in the scheme of things, in a nation of 1.2 billion people, Kannada speaking audience, I, I'm not going to, I'm going to riff on numbers, but let's say, let's assume it's 40 million people or 60 million people, right? In the right. scheme of things, she's a very bit, bit part player. Right. And the fact that her death has captured national imagination and people are saying, come on, this is irrespective of your politics. This is uncalled for and not correct. I I, I think that is I, I'm not sure this would happen in Bangladesh. I'm not sure this would happen sure. in Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so I, I, I think the one thing is we can lament the death of a very upstanding uh, journalist. And I think that is fair to do. Um, but I think the contrarian view would be, okay, something bad happens. What's the reaction of the body politic in the country? So are there media organizations who are trying to spin this into a scooter accident or like she got bit by a dog, some kind of random well, thing wor- like that? Well, worse, worse, because the the propaganda line from the BJP's troll army uh, is very clearly that, uh, you know, she, uh, that this was the work of Naxalites because... You know, she had also pissed off Naxalites. And that happened sometimes. She was sympathetic to the Naxalite movement, seeing it, you know, as a kind of movement that uh, opposed injustice. And one could have agreed or disagreed with her on that. Uh, but, you know, they're using that to basically claim that the Naxalites got her. But uh, that's been, that claim has been conclusively rubbished. It's been rubbished by, you know, her sister, by a number of other people. Uh, her yeah. brother, interestingly, is someone who's joining the BJP. So I don't know whether her brother has you know, endorsed that theory. But one way or another, you know, the BJP's sort of army is, online army is out in, in full swing. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's, you know, that's essentially what I would say. And yeah, I you know, I agree with you. I'll just say that in, in Pakistan also, there was a, an activist uh, and, uh, you know, a person called Sabine Mahmood, who nice. was very courageous. And she had created a kind of cultural space for people to, you know, 
talk about art and poetry and politics and she is someone who had held a series of uh, conversations in that space on um, you know the the uh, pakistan state oppression of the baloch uh, community and right. uh, as a result of that she was assassinated uh, so and you know i believe that they were they were protests they may not have been very large in number there's another uh, you know former journalist journalist i shouldn't say former journalist raza rumi and i just know him a little bit he's someone who uh, i think he's you know opposed the pakistani uh, states and the islamist attack on ahmadis and so on so he, there was an assassination attempt on him he's in washington based in washington right now uh, right. I, I you know so so there is there are voices that speak out but yes uh, i think you know we've had this tradition in the 70s and even 80s of uh protest and organization for a number of uh, you know number of issues uh, yeah. the rajiv gandhi government i remember i was in school then and the in india today i remember a story the rajiv gandhi government had tried to introduce a very draconian bill which would have yeah. severely curtailed journalists rights and there was such a backlash from journalists that the government decided to do away with it now what's disheartening you know it's it's heartening to see the civil society standing up but what's disheartening is the mainstream media you know india today such a uh you know such a such a illustrious distinguished sort of tradition they have completely now cowed out and become mouthpieces of this government and they're terrified they're actually scared you know after seeing what how the government went after ndtv and so on so uh they're just following the orders from the government it seems that is the bigger tragedy in the piece rohit clearly i mean <coughs> obviously the, the death of this lady a, and this journalist remarkable person as she is and as we learn more about her we'll probably realize that you know there are gazillions other people like this in the journalism trade in india well the the broader point i wanted to make earlier on was i said something very loosely that you know indian people in general have a reputation of being polite but devious that i that's a very incorrect generalization what i was the sentiment that i was trying to convey was that it takes a lot for a person in the indian milieu to take an adversarial position Right, right right you mean that and, like and, we are, uh, are non confrontational yeah. in some way correct so, correct correct yeah. we we are conciliatory and collaborative yeah. as yeah, people yeah, yeah. as cultures right yeah. so for somebody to go out on a limb and a lady uh, journalist at that uh, two sinister points that bjp bjp is trying to make this out as you know something that was passed the buck onto some other unidentified you know mass naxalite government that is unfortunate because that's where the kind of the sinister piece comes out um but i think the way civil society has stood up is commendable um but uh, i mean i think it's sad i mean the fact that you know we are gradually going down the area where media uh, this kind of contested the 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 scrutinizing media uh, right. is going away which uh, which is probably another conversation and look ndt we've done an episode on ndtv they are no beacons you know they are uh, right, they are right. not we, we don't want to put them on a pedestal they have no, their flaws no, no paragon, but um, but um, you know uh, but look i hope this gets inquired into properly and the people who've done it brought to justice and we hope that uh civil society uh consternation at this and uh, demonst- uh you know um sc- standing up for it leads to some something somewhere all right i think on that hopeful note i think we should uh, wrap this episode up so we'll be back with another episode uh, right away actually take care man take care bye bye okay.